are we going to get into today? Well, today we're going to do, and I, and I don't do very much on this channel, we're going to brew a beer. Uh, it is called Still Works in Brewing, right? Okay, yeah, so today we're going to, uh, to brew us a beer. Uh, I was at a local pub, and they had a beer called a, a Kentucky Commons. Boy, was it good! And I said, I got to make some of this. And it happens to be my, my uh, keg rater is empty. I got two taps empty. Can't have that. Uh, so I decided I was going to make this. I did a little research and found a nice recipe for it. And I will share the recipe down in the uh, notes. Uh, I think one of the reasons I really like this beer is it has corn in it. Hey, you know me. I like my corn, right? Okay. But first things first, welcome to Stillworks and Brewing. My name is Randy and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. All right, let's get going with this recipe. All right, so the first thing I need, and I had to buy this one pound pack. That's okay. Um, first thing I need is seven pounds of a two-room malt. You know, just a, a base, um, pale malt. Alright, and I'll put them in my green mill. Alright, so let me get these seven pounds in and I'll be right back, okay? A little gray. So what's next? Okay, I want eight ounces of a flaked rye. Eight ounces of flaked rye. All right. I get it open. All right. Let me get a put that on the scale. Okay. So I want eight ounces. Okay. Eight ounces of flake fry, which I didn't need to put it in there. All right. Well, I messed up. That's okay. It won't hurt it. Okay. Um, I want four ounces of a black malt. Yeah, usually the flake products I don't put through the mill. I just get a little carried away, I guess. Okay, so I want four ounces of a black. What was that? Four ounces. That is dark, too. Okay, four ounces. Four ounces of that. And I want four ounces of a crystal 40. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, let me mill this up.
I got left to put in is I got uh, two pounds of a flake corn. I'll put that in. All right. So our, well, this is this a grist? Okay, this is ready. So let me get some hot water going, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay. So in my brew pot, I heated up. I, I heated up at nine gallons of, of water to 162 degrees, right around that net neighborhood. So what I'll do is I'm gonna pump over about three gallons to start with into my mash tun, and then we'll start stirring in the grains, and, and then I'll we'll get this masher going. All right, so let me pump over about three gallons. I do have a bazooka screen in the bottom. Get my mash paddle. Uh, at this point in time, I'm not too much worried about uh, the sanitation part because this is all pre-boiled. So, uh, what I'll start doing is the water start to go in. I'll just start adding the grains that we milk a little at a time. I can't see. I'm steaming up. Let me put some more grain in. I mean, this is very similar to. Uh, Making your uh, spirits, making a mash. check for our temperature which is very important because we got to convert those starches in that grain over into sugar. What we're looking for is somewhere between 145 ish to a little bit less than 160. Okay, I got 147. Alright so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a little bit more hot water see if I can get that temperature up. that up. What do we got now? 153. I'm going to leave it right there. That's perfect. Alright, 153. Get this out of the way. Alright, so we're going to get the lid on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit, I'm going to say an hour and a half. Uh, I found it just works a little better and then we'll move on to the next step uh, and the next uh, we'll get there all right we'll see you in an hour and a half let's uh, spar just grain over into our brew pot so we can get started on the uh, the uh, next next step okay all right let me move camera down so you can see what's going on all right I'm gonna start sparging it over oh look at that color and what I'm going to do is a batch sparge. In other words, I'm going to drain this out. I'm going to fill her back full of hot water, drain it out, and I'm going to do this until I collect six gallons of wort. So at this point in time now, it is, it is called wort.
what we're trying to do, we'll just try to wash the sugars out of this grain, you know, put it into our brew pot. And uh, so we want more than we want to end up with. We want to end up at the very end with five gallons. But with the boiling and stuff like that, we will lose some. So that's why we're going to start with six. Okay, I got it all sparged over into my brew pot, uh, and I, I sparged over until I collected six gallons of water. So now I'm going to put some fire underneath of it, and we'll get it up to boiling, and then we'll go uh, start on that step. Okay, so now is one of the critical times that you uh, you don't want to walk away just because when it starts to boil. It will boil over in a heartbeat if you're not watching it. Uh, and it would make one heck of a mess. So it's getting close to boil. You start seeing the foam. So I'm going to be turning the heat down in a minute and being ready to stir it to keep it down. And then once we get to the boil under control, we'll make our first top addition. Okay? Yeah, just don't walk away yet. Okay, time to shut the heat down a little bit. If you see it's just boiling, I just turned the heat way down, and you can start to see the foam is building up, right? So we're going to keep this stirred. Hopefully, I want to turn the heat all the way off. And what we do, once it, once it balances itself out, then we'll, we'll crank heat up a little bit. Ooh, see, see it building? Now some people will squirt some water on top to knock the foam down. I usually find if you stir and turn the heat down, you can keep it under control. Then after this first stage, it will uh, the foaminess will go away. See, it, it's knocking it down. See. There we go. All right, so I'll set the timer for one hour. Okay, it's time to put our first top addition in. So our first top addition is a half ounce of uh, cluster hops. About half this bag. And that's about half of it. I'll wait. Okay. All right. So this will go on, and then we, at the last 20 minutes of the boil, we will add in the uh, rest of the cluster hops for the last 20 minutes. Okay. So we just got to let us do its thing for the next hour. 20 minutes to go. Last hop addition. All right. Smells good. You know, everything from this point forward, you need to sanitize, okay? Uh, so the last thing I'm going to do is, I got 15 minutes left in this boil, so this is my wort chiller. So what I want to do is go ahead and stick that in there for the last 15 minutes. So that boiling liquid will sanitize that wort chiller, okay? So... Uh, like I said, and then anything else, the ferment bucket, we want to sanitize with star sands, what I use, and any utensils that touches it inside there, inside the fermentation bucket, I want to sanitize also. Okay, because uh, germs love that sugary liquid, right? Alright, so I'll be back in 15 minutes, and we'll get ready to start cooling this down. Okay, so the timer went off, let's kill the heat. And what we'll do is we'll start to uh, work short to start cooling this down. And we want to cool it down 
below 90 degrees and then uh, we'll put it in the fermentation bucket. Okay, so it's down to temperature. Let's fill up our fermentation bucket. Now, I did put star stain in that bucket. You know, star stains it all, so it's all sanitized. And I did check the temperature. It's uh, about 89 degrees. Uh, I want some good oxygen mixed into the port that will help the yeast get started. Okay. Okay, so we're all sparged over. I mean, we're all in our our uh, fermentation bucket. Let's see what our starting gravity is. And our starting gravity is 1.060, and that is right around six uh, percent alcohol, I think, if I remember right. So that, that's, that's beautiful. So what do we got to do now? Well now, because it is a temp, I got some American uh, ale yeast here. We'll sprinkle that across the top. For our fermentation, I'm going to take some star sand and spray all that up. Put the lid on it. Okay, this beer ought to be pretty darn tasty. Um, I put it in my fermentation room. What's next? Well, I put it in my fermentation room, and the next step is it's going. I, like I said, I put the yeast on top. It will be in the fur of uh, the primary fermenter, what I just put it in, for two weeks, and then after two weeks, what I will do is I'll use a siphon. And transfer it into a different fermenter and leave all that junk behind okay and then we will let it in that secondary fermentation for two more weeks and uh, what that would help do is it will finish fermenting out and it will also help to clarify the beer okay a lot of the stuff will settle out um, and then after that uh, I'll put it in a keg we'll force carbonate it and uh, now you can put priming sugar right in the keg, uh, or you can force carbonate. I just usually force carbonate. That works pretty well for me. Um, why don't I put it in bottles? Well, you can put it in bottles, uh, and then you would use priming sugar to prime the bottles. I use keg because it's just so easy. I don't have to clean all those bottles. I do bottle some beer. But a lot of it I just keg because it's, uh, it's just easy for me. And um, that's why I do it. So, let's see. What else? What am I missing? Alright, so this is a Kentucky Commons. Um, it is a very easy to drink beer. Uh, it's very creamy. Uh, and not very hoppy. It's just a good, good drinking beer, okay? With a lot of body, a lot of taste, and uh, it's, it's on the darker side. All right, and what, so what's it? I had seven pounds of pale malt, which was two row, uh, two pounds of flaked corn, and that's where the creaminess comes from, eight ounces of flaked rye, four ounces of black malt, and four ounces of uh, crystal 40. And that's those last two are where the colors are from. And I use cluster hops at 60 minutes and 20 minutes. I'll put these ingredients down into the uh, description box. 
uh, just to help you out. So, I guess, less, oh, and it did come at a 1.060 gravity, which should be, if I'm thinking, where's my go? Uh, if you look on your triple scale, 1.060, you find it and you spin it around so that should be somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 7.2 neighborhood of alcohol ABV so that'd be pretty nice all right I'm pretty pleased with that um, I guess the last thing I got to say is hey thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time here on still works and brewing cheers everybody